It's every. Yes. That helped. Blum. Hi, guys. Uh, just let me go turn off all my stuff. As to this, everything was great, but now everything is not great. Um, feel free to ask questions. I'm here for you. Again, it's Sarah Carey from Martha Stewart. I'm here for quite a long time, so hopefully you've seen many of them. But today I'm making one live, and it's a cauliflower. You said you're frozen. Pea. Uh, There's no one you're not. I don't know. Am I not? Am I not? Message. I don't know. Is it gray? No, this is okay. I just got a message. Fine. I'm going to continue, but if it gets too bad, I think we may have making a cauliflower and chickpea pita. The recipe is in our May issue of Martha Stewart Living. Um, and I'm here cooking at home like you guys are cooking at home. So please feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um, I, this recipe w uses some things that either takes, sorry, stay really well in your refrigerator, like cauliflower, which lasts a long time, or come out of your pantry, like chickpeas. So, um, always have a can of chickpeas around, because that's what I do, and it makes life really, really delicious and really great. The first thing that I did was I preheated my oven to 425 when I walk into the kitchen. I always like to preheat my oven. If I'm going to be roasting something that way, I'm pretty guaranteed that it's going to be preheated to the temperature that I want to when I'm ready to put the stuff into the oven. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the video that I did of the rhubarb crumble, but uh, I forgot to preheat the oven. <laughs> so I'm going to start with one head of cauliflower. Normally, we cut out all of this core, but I'm trying to be pretty... Um, you know, not having a lot of waste. So I'm just going to cut off the bottom part where it's like maybe a little bit dried out um, and then keep the rest of the core as part of this recipe. Now the recipe says to do one and a half inch florets and I'm just going to cut through the stem and use that and not get rid of it because why waste? Um, or you can cut into florets and go like this and then just cut the core piece into pieces. I think that's a better idea. Just figuring out as I go, you guys. Cut your cauliflower up. This is a delicious vegetarian meal. What's, Very, the, what's the best way to store leftover cauliflower? What's the best way to store leftover cauliflower? I like to, well, here's what I do. When I get home from the market, I take my cauliflower and I cut it up and I said this before, and I know that it's not as helpful to cut things up um, before you put them in the refrigerator, but I do find that I'll use them more if they're cut up and they take up less room if I cut them up and put them into a resealable bag or something to store them in. So I just take my cauliflower, cut it up like I'm doing here, and then if there's anything left over, I just put it into a resealable bag, and it lasts pretty well. It will start to... Um, oxidize so like the places especially where they're cut like any kind of cut surface will start getting a little bit brown if you've left it in there too long and that's a sure sign that you should you should use it up um, it's not necessarily going to be bad but it's unsightly and it will start to taste bad um, eventually so use it pretty quickly it will stay much much longer if you don't cut it up at all but I find that a huge head of cauliflower takes up a lot of room in my refrigerator. I live in New York City. My refrigerator is not very big. So um, I usually cut it up anyway. And then you can eat it, right? You can eat it with dip. You can eat it um, on its own. You can steam it and eat it, which is really delicious, and put like a vinaigrette on it. You can roast them whole, which is a whole other thing. Obviously, you wouldn't want to cut them up if you did that. Um, so cut your cauliflower up. You're looking for about eight cups total of cauliflower. And I have a rimmed baking sheet right here. I'm just gonna transfer that directly there. Come on, you guys, I know you have questions. Ask away. And then I'm also gonna add to that same baking sheet. This is, um, one 15 ounce can of chickpeas. I actually cooked these chickpeas from fresh because I had some dry, 
but it's about a cup and a half of chickpeas total. That's what you get out of a can, drained and rinsed. And then to that add a teaspoon of ground cumin. My cumin is very, very full, so might get a little bit more. Sprinkle that right on. Black pepper. When you can, grind your pepper fresh, or you can get, um, if you have a spice grinder, what I like to do sometimes and what we do at work is we uh, take a bunch of our peppercorns and then just grind them in the spice mill and then keep freshly ground pepper in a bowl where we can like change the way that we do with salt. Or you can grind with one of these convenient grindery things. What are these called? Spice grinders, I guess. And some salt. I like to keep my salt covered so it doesn't get any dust in it. So I keep it in one of these little containers and then open it up while I'm using it all day long and then cover it up at night because uh, dust does settle in there and then you're eating dust in your salt. So keep it in something closed. <laughs> Super annoying. He gets really annoyed when we don't pay attention to him, so he's just going to be barking through this entire thing probably. I should probably have taken had the kids take him out. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Normally I don't measure, but I will for you guys. And then stir everything up. The best way to do this is, of course, with your hands, but... Um, wait. Try to get everything nicely coated. And like I said, 425 degree oven. I like to make sure that at least one bit of flat surface of the cauliflower is touching the pan because that's the part that's gonna get the most golden brown. You will stir it during cooking, but give it a good, a good head start by placing some cauliflower down. Okay, gotta wash my hands off. This goes into the oven. It's 425 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. You don't have to sit here and watch and watch me wait for that to bake because I actually made one already. But while you're waiting, when you're making this, clean up a little bit. And then and then make your sauce. So the sauce is a yogurt sauce and it's supposed to be made in a blender, but I don't have a blender here with me. Hey, so. somebody, somebody asked a question. Do you wash your cauliflower before cutting it up and storing it? Um, I don't like to put anything away wet. Um, and, but you know, of course you should always wash your produce. So I would cut it up, put it away and then wash it after so that you can dry it off right before you use it. Um, if you put it into the refrigerator wet in any way, it will um, speed up the process of it going bad. So you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna use a food processor to do my sauce, even though the recipe calls for a blender, and you can do that too. Um, the one thing about a blender is it gets things fine more quickly, but um, you you can certainly substitute a food processor in most blender recipes um, if you want to. This recipe uses a half a teaspoon of garlic. We have, a, uh, in our kitchen, we are pretty sensitive to the taste of raw garlic and like how intense it can become. So we tend to go pretty light on garlic, especially when it's gonna be raw. So it only calls for a half a teaspoon. If you're a huge garlic lover, then go ahead and use more. Chop. I mean, this is this clove is probably closer to a teaspoon. You can also smash it with a little bit of salt to get it really down to a paste, or you can use a um, so sprinkle with some coarse salt. 
way it'll distribute better. And also, since I'm using a food processor, I think this is a really nice thing to do because it's not going to get as fine in the food processor as it would in a blender. Ooh! Oh! My gosh! That noise! Why is it doing that? Ugh. It's like, well, the um, fingernails on a blackboard. I've never experienced that before. Now I'm just realizing that I'm using my fruit board and I'm putting garlic on it. I have to remember to bleach. Okay, so get it really, really, really fine. And you want about a half a teaspoon. Just gonna. James wants to know what the best way to get garlic smell out of your board is. It's basically impossible to get garlic smell out of your board. The best way to do it though, is use something like a soft scrub or soft soap scrub with bleach or something with bleach in it and just wash your board really well. Um, bleach is very helpful for that. Uh, my usual, what I normally do, here, I just want you guys to see how good I am. <laughs> That's all that's left. That was almost exactly a half a teaspoon. Um, use a different board. Normally what I do, and I didn't do it today because I was just distracted by getting ready to do this, is I have a separate board. It's actually just like a thin, flexible board that I place on top of my regular board. And I use that for chicken. I use it for cutting garlic and onions, and that way I can take it and immediately wash it. I don't have to worry about cross-contamination um, with things that are going to, you know, with, if you're cutting up chicken, because you can wash that separately, or with flavors getting in your bowl. It did. Okay. The sauce. Half a teaspoon of garlic, half a cup of chopped cilantro. And you can use both the stems and the leaves. I just cut off the very bottom of the stems. This is probably more like a cup. A jalapeno. You can remove the stems. Obviously, jalapenos are both widely varying in size and widely varying in heat. Um, if you are heat sensitive, you should definitely remove the seeds. And the um, Janet nice. doesn't like cilantro. Janet. Janet. A lot of people don't like cilantro, Janet. My dad claims that he's allergic. Maybe he is. Maybe he just doesn't like it. Uh, you can use another herb if you like dill. You can use dill. Parsley would be really good. Um, I suppose you could leave it out and just make it a garlic jalapeno sauce. How, let's see how spicy it is. I always taste the seeds, see how spicy it is. It's like meat, mm, it's growing in spice actually. I'm gonna go ahead and remove most of the seeds so that more people can eat it. Okay. And then it's some lime. And some yogurt. Um, it's a half a cup of yogurt, which I'm not, hold on a sec, I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to turn my machine on and I'm going to drop the jalapeno through the feed tube to start it off. Then my garlic. yogurt regular or Greek? This is uh, Greek yogurt. So you want this to be kind of thick. I'm using like a 0% Greek yogurt. You can use, um, wait, <laughs> it totally just like went up the Icelandic uh, yogurt. That's not yogurt. I can't, I can't believe I don't remember the name. Anyway, we use full fat yogurt in the recipe originally, but this is zero percent because that's what uh, my wife Marianne eats and she is filming this and this is for her so we're using the low fat sweet three quarters of a cup of yogurt I'm just gonna do this because it's basically 
approximately three quarters of a cup. That's a heaping half cup. And it's definitely not going to be as fine as it would be if I was using a uh, blender. But there's nothing I can do about that because I don't have a blender. I'm going to live with it because that's just the way that it works when you're cooking. You have to just figure it out. Half a cup. Season it, of course. Mm. <laughs> Turns out that jalapeno was pretty spicy even without the seeds. I'm adding a little bit more salt, but remember that I added salt when I crushed my garlic, so it's already seasoned. And some pepper. Get a little blend, and that's it. That's the sauce. Um, because I want it to be efficient with my time, I have already pre-roasted some chickpeas and cauliflower. Now this isn't warm um, because I made it before, but you can warm up if you want to. Point being, you can make this ahead. I have some pita here, four pita. I'm going to just throw these in the oven for a second to heat up with this already roasting. And clean up a little bit because, behold, I've made a mess. <clears throat> and now is the time when you're going to clean so that you can assemble your sandwiches nicely. Come on, you guys. You must have some questions. Uh, should you skin chickpeas or am I crazy? That's from oh. James. Should you skin chickpeas? James who? Mikowski? James! I know it was you. Thank you for asking questions. James, we work together. <laughs> he is an art director and one of my fave, one of my favorite people. Uh, you're crazy, James. Since I know that it's you and I could tell it was you from that question, I was going to say that, but then I was like, what if it isn't James? Uh, you're crazy. Don't skin them. That's crazy. That's just crazy talk. Though, and I... You know, here's when people usually say that you should skin them. It is for making hummus. And if you're cooking your chickpeas from scratch, you can do what Mike Sol Sol Solomonov, I don't know how to say his last name, like from Zahav in Philadelphia does, and add like a little bit of baking soda to the chickpeas while it's cooking, and that sort of dissolves the skin, so you don't have to skin. All right. Um, hey, Jen wants to know if there's any saving a dish that's too spicy. You know, somebody asked me that. Oh, my gosh. It was my mom, actually. Um, she asked me that the other day, and that, that's a really challenging thing to um, handle because spice isn't something that you can just dissipate by, like, I don't know, putting in something to absorb it. I know a lot of people think that you can, like, get rid of saltiness by adding a potato, which I'm not sure I believe in, but a lot of people say that. Um, so for instance, my mother made chili the other day and she, it was too spicy. So we discussed it and what she did was she added more tomatoes and more beans. And I suggested maybe stirring in some rice, but basically what you need to do is dissipate the spiciness. So you're going to have to like add other things just to have that, whatever it is in there that's spicy in contact with other stuff but you can't really make the thing itself less spicy. Somebody just suggested using yogurt. Um, yeah, well, you can name. serve it with things that will be cooling, like yogurt or sour cream. Um, those certainly will help that. Serving things that are spicy over rice is very helpful. Serving them in smaller amounts is helpful. Um, all of those are, are, are good things. I mean, a lot of spicy foods are just naturally served with 
a cooling component, cucumbers, uh, uh, a yogurt sauce, not this one because it's already spicy. Uh, yeah, that's actually a really great suggestion, something watery. I'm going to just grab these guys. Ow. Should have done that with um, tongs. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm such a show off. Um, I'm leaving that one in there. But anyway, this can be made ahead. You can reheat your mixture if you want to. You can use it room temperature if you want to. Um, either way is delicious. This is great served on salads too. It's an excellent um, thing to put on salads. Addition to salads to bulk them up, I guess is what I mean. So I heated my pitas up just a tiny bit. Not enough to get them to open up, I guess. You know, when you're live, these things just happen. So then fill with your chickpea and cauliflower mixture. Need a spoon, really, but. Oops, darn it. I'll drizzle a little sauce. Oops, one. This time I'm going to put the sauce on the inside because I realize I want more inside. <laughs> oh, when things don't work, it's so much fun. So it really makes you appreciate having a segment chef getting stuff ready for you. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm gonna my heart to the rules. What? I'm doing a live video right now. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, then I'm just gonna eat this and uh, hope that you guys come back the next time I make something delicious live on YouTube. This is a cauliflower and roasted cauliflower and chickpea pita with creamy yogurt sauce. The recipe is in our May issue and online at MarthaStewart.com. And I really think you guys should try it out because it's basically a pantry meal, sort of, but it's also really delicious, really hearty and uh, super duper easy to make. Mm. Really, really good. Really good. Give it a try. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm. My end. Mm -hmm. Oh, now the cameraman is having one. Camera woman.